Nancy Delabriere, and I am organizing this network, networking event um, today during Computer Science Education Week. I think it's been really important that girls have a chance to meet other girls who are also interested in computer science. And hopefully you guys can share a little bit about what you do and how you are um, attracting young women in your school. And I know Emily um, was is at Richmond Elementary, so why don't you just do a quick um, introduction and we'll go all around the room again. Okay. Uh, I'm Emily Wood. I'm the librarian at Richmond Elementary. And uh, two, for the past two years, this will be our third year that I have run our Girls Who Code uh, Club after school. And I have returning members with me here in, from our, my fourth grade classes. <laughs> We're super excited to be here and share their experiences with you. Um, <laughs> they will keep going. <laughs> so I'm going to pass the, the introduction oh, mic on <laughs> to the, our Wait, next friend. Is this our fourth grade? They're all in, all in fourth grade. Let's pass it on to Lisa, who also has a Girls Who Code chapter. And before I do that, I just want to say what a joy it is to hear such joy. Yeah, for sure. I was just thinking that as well. <laughs> um, so hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Dion. I teach at the University of Vermont in the computer science department. And I run a chapter of Girls Who Code at UVM on Saturday mornings. Um, so it is a, a little bit older chapter than what Emily has. So I have the sixth to, to 12th grade uh, club. And so I've been running it for, I think, five years now. Um, here. And so I've had a couple of students who started when they were in high school and now they're in college studying some sort of engineering or computing related um, um, field. And then I have others who started when they were in fifth or sixth grade in middle school and now they're in, in high school. And, and so get to sort of see them evolve and, and get to just work with them to create fun things. So yeah, happy to, to meet all of you and to see you all. Uh, and I am running my club uh, in a hybrid format this semester. So uh, if anyone wants to join virtually, if you're too far away from Burlington, then that's a thing that we can set up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And we also have uh, Leah and her students from Shelburne. I'll let them introduce themselves. Okay, so I'm Leah Jolie, and I'm currently the digital learning leader at Shelburne. That's a K-8 school. Um, I'm Sawyer. Um, I'm Martha. So Sawyer and Martha, and they're both sixth graders. Thank you for joining us. And, and they also they also said to me before this started, they said, so does this mean we get to start our own club? Is that what's happening here? Because we want a club like this. So they're very excited to hear like how you go about starting one or joining one. So it'd be great. That's exactly what I hope that we'll get out of today is a little bit about what you do at your clubs and uh, how to get started. And um, I am Lucy Delabriere and I had, 20 years ago, I started a um, group called Tech Savvy Girls in the Northeast Kingdom. And we had our 20th anniversary this summer. So we're pretty excited. But I've been thinking a lot about um, how we might incorporate a more formal Girls Who Code throughout the school year, because it's usually just a summer camp. And it grew from maybe 12 girls and 20 years ago to over 50 girls right before COVID. So each summer for a week. So I think we should do something more during the school years. Okay, let's start with having, um, uh, Emily, do your ladies, young ladies want to talk a bit about your club, when it meets, how it meets, what it does, things like that. And girls can share. Let's, 
Raise your hand if you'd like to talk. I got Ella who'd like to start us off. No. Right? I'll come, okay, I'll come back to you today. Sadie, start us off. Tell us about the club. What do we do? Oh, it's on. <laughs> yeah, we like to see ourselves on camera. Ella, because she's far in the back. She said that we get they get to play games, and they can continue to play games if they like it, but they can move on if they don't. They get to look at what other girls are doing and see what they're doing. Um, why do you guys think that, that Girls Who Code is an important one? Uh, Ella, go ahead. Yeah, so have more girls code. Maybe. It's good for you to learn how to code. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> Sadie. Um, I want to add on to what Ella said because, yes, girls don't code a lot, but boys were the ones that used to code a lot. So if we make the club, then it gives a chance to um, give girls a chance to code without having to, like, so off from what boys are Yeah. So the boys don't have to tell us what to do, right? Yeah! 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 each other together because a lot of the kids are in the, in the same class during the day and we'll have third and fourth grade so that um, sisterhood activity really gets them to know each other um, 
and then we I had 25 girls so I had someone help me yeah and so we split the group up so one group did un an unplugged activity with my other counselor and I led them through a lesson on making some things on scratch. You can hear that one of their favorites was the magic eight ball. Oh yeah, it predicted the future. It predicted the future. Emily, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, oh, no. I was going to be in the studying class with Emily, but I was going to be in the <laughs> And um, then we would switch, and um, they would do the other group would do the other one. One of their one of the favorites was making a binary code necklace. Yeah, I never so, finished mine. I did. I did. Super I fun. It. Um, I and it got it, it allowed them to really get to know other girls in the school and just ha have lots of fun. That's fun. And as you can That's see, they actually can't stop themselves from coding right now. So uh, that is our our club here at Richmond, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend starting our girls who code. <laughs> how often do you meet and for how long we meet um once a week for t about 10 weeks on thursday on thursdays um that was one one reflection was i think we needed more time so <laughs> it's from after school so 2 30 um and this year we're going to go to 4 30 to fit everything in <laughs> Did you say you meet once a week after school, or did you say lunchtime? After school. After school. Okay, great. Right. And then we eat our food in front of the computer the night and then the computer. You're up to what grade? Up to what grade? Start with third and. It's just third and fourth grade. Um, the organization does a three through five club, um, but we don't have any fifth graders in this school, so it's just um, third and fourth. Oh, we also designed our own t-shirts last year. Yeah, we made shirts! So this is what they designed <laughs> for themselves. <laughs> I think it sounds like um, once they leave you, they could go make the virtual camp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's hear from Lisa and see what would opportunity might be waiting for them after they leave your school, which it sounds like fourth grade is when they leave your school. Hi, Lisa. All right. Hello. Um, so that was fun. Thank you for sharing from Richmond. It's nice to see other Girls Who Code clubs popping up in Vermont. That makes me so happy. Um, yes, so I run uh, my club on Saturday mornings from 10 to noon. Uh, and it was in person before the pandemic. And then it was on hiatus for a little bit. And then it came back in a virtual format. And now it's in hybrid mode. So it's it's been all over the place a little bit. Um, but currently we have a few people who do come in person and we're in a computer lab on UVM's campus. And we have a few people who are attending on Zoom, similar to what all of you um, are, are doing right now. And so uh, everything we do is um, currently through websites. So we create some websites. We, we have used Scratch before. Um, this semester, we've been using another platform called Codesters that uh, is also an animation platform. And that one's built on Python. So we've been learning some Python as well. Um, we have done some robotics in the past. Before the pandemic, we actually had a, a few different robots that we would have um, students navigate around different obstacles or go through mazes. And then we had them uh, have a dance competition. So they got to choose their own song and um, make the robot dance to the beat. And it was a lot of fun. And I think everyone won that competition. So that was a, a good time. Um, we have done, we have not done a magic eight ball, but we have done Mad Libs. And I think that was one of the favorite ones from the club um, because Mad Libs are always fun. Uh, and so, so there's lots of room for creativity. We, and in a similar fashion, do a lot of open-ended projects. So I sort of introduce or get people started with a certain idea, and then I let them run with it. So people can bring different themes and different backgrounds and different characters and different colors and whatever they want to the, 
to their program. And so there's really a lot of room for uh, expression and, and a lot of fun and, you know, nothing's graded. So there's not a lot of pressure in it. It's really just about learning to code and having fun with it. So yeah, it's a good time. And, and I've had an, again, a handful of students that have stayed with me for a few years. And so some of them are getting pretty talented and some of them are starting to help other people within the, the club as well, which is great. Um, for the spotlight person, the, you said you do a spotlight activity in Richmond every week. Yeah, Girls Who Code likes to, to spotlight people in tech. So what I do is, um, since I teach at UVM, I bring some students from my class each week. And so I, I have a sign-up sheet for them that they, they use in the beginning of the semester. And so every week I'll have two students come in and they'll talk about how they became interested in computer science and what their dream job is and what they want to do with it and what their favorite class has been in computing. Um, and that really helps the, the people in the club really see that, yeah, you know, you can do this and apply it to anything. And so it's it leaves a lot of room for, for you to really build on and, and um, you know, explore your interests and everything. So, yeah, it's a little bit about my club. Lisa, how does one get involved with your club? Do you have like a web presence they could go to or a link you can share later or? How would um, I, I have my email address would be the, the way to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chat here in case people want it. It is my UVM email address. Um, and uh, I, um, I sort of keep my own email list and my own sort of registration list. So once we start up, Again, uh, it runs by the UVM schedule. So once we start up again, once the spring semester starts in late January, uh, then I will send out uh, an email to the to everyone on my email list and say, hey, we're starting up again. If you want to come in person, um, you know, and I send out a form to see what people's preferences are. So if you want to do it virtually, I send a Zoom link. If you want to do it in person, I tell you where uh, and where we're going to meet and at what time. So, yeah, that would be the, the way to connect. And can you remind me again of what's the youngest? Um, yeah, um, the club is officially for sixth to 12th graders. Uh, typically, we get on the younger side of that, at least at the beginning. And then, you know, you can stay for as many years as you want to. Um, but I have gone a little bit younger. So I have dipped into fifth and maybe even fourth grade because some people were just having so much fun in the club that their younger sibling was like, hey, why can't I be involved? And so they asked to join as well. Uh, and we do have a couple boys in the club just because we don't want to be super discriminatory, but we are very clear that it's, it's uh, intended to form a community, especially for women in computer science and to, to help sort of foster that welcoming environment and, and, and the very inclusive, um, sort of atmosphere there. Great. I remember in my group, um, we said that it is for anybody interested in promoting more women into computer science. And sometimes if you are, um, don't identify as female and are still interested in that mission, then you could come. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, sounds like uh, Emily's young um, girls who club chapter once they leave her could have an opportunity because I don't think it's that far from Richmond to uh, Burlington so yeah they could come in person or or they could come on zoom I'm not sure how long the hybrid mode is going to last if I'm going to eventually go back to fully in person or not we're going to see how this pandemic plays out and what people's preferences are. But for the moment, yeah, being able to attend virtually is kind of a, a nice way to, to broaden that net that of people that can attend. I have one more question for you. And you said it's a really no pressure place to um, learn to code and um, in that you play with robotics and you play with physical things, but it's not a competition environment. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Um, we all get to share out our progress at the end of each session. And we all sort of celebrate each other's programs and point out the things that are unique and what they like about it and, and those sorts of things. So it's all very positive and, and you're right. It's not competitive at all. We're not uh, pitting anyone against each other. And, and there's, there's not sort of a, 
uh, you know, in, in any way that that sort of idea where we're all, you know, learning together and celebrating each other. And even if your program's not finished, let's see what you have and let's celebrate that as well. So that's that's sort of the club. And, and actually, my undergrad students, that's their biggest takeaway from it is that they're so used to coding in classrooms for projects for grades that they're so used to having that be sort of like that pressure scenario of needing to make deadlines and needing to accomplish certain tasks that when they come and visit my club and it's all open-ended and there's no pressure and you can just explore and have fun with it again, that that's, that's one of their biggest takeaways is they're like, oh my gosh, I forgot that coding is, is like, can be really fun too. (laughs) It's, it's not just for a practical purpose of building something, but it's actually just because you enjoy it. And so it's, it's that sort of joyful atmosphere for sure. Thank you. That's what I have found also that removing that competitive element um, can attract a, a um, some people who don't enjoy the competition part of it. So, great. Thank you. Leah, would your um, young ladies and your group want to share a little bit more about the project that they're working on right now? All right. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about like how you've worked through the project, maybe some of the challenges some things that were positive about it that you learned maybe in, in working on these self portraits. Sure. Uh, and you got to kind of yell it out really loud through that mask. I got a better experience in coding and I learned how to code different shapes like make a head or hair. Um, yeah, I thought it was really fun to learn about coding and like more about like how I can use it and I can do it in like my free time and because it's really fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we learned a lot about shapes and colors, I would say, <laughs> and placement of objects like kind of on a canvas. And I have to say this group, <laughs> if I missed a session or was late, I've never had a group that's been more, I guess the word conscientious about seeking me out to like, oh my gosh, you're not here. It's been five minutes. They looked forward to it so often. Like they would always come try to find me when we'd miss a date and make sure we followed up um, because they really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. One of the most fun coding experiences I've had as well. So, and there's four in this group, in this project that have been working together. And I know they told me what they liked about the project, but could you formally tell us about the project? Because I think we were informally talking about it before. So what's the goal of the project? What's it's um, called and how do you get involved? Um, we were making a digital self-portrait and um, basically we used a bunch of shapes and colors to just like make our head and just try to make it look like us. Well, Martha doesn't really look like her, but I think you were creative on your hairstyle, Martha, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Um, they also um, that can submit it. So it's code art is the name of the website. I think it's codeart.org probably. Um, and they have the competition that you could submit your self portrait to. So all of the information should be on there. Oops, maybe you can send me a link and yeah. I'll put it in the um, kind of the showcase show notes or something. Yeah, yep. Great. Well, ladies, um, this is so encouraging um, to hear how much is happening to get more uh, women and girls involved in computer science and computational thinking. And it's certainly, um, is a joy to my heart where I started 20 years ago to do this. And I'm interested in how do you start a Girls Who Code chapter? What do you have to do? And what makes you a Girls Who Code chapter versus just a bunch of girls who don't connect or call themselves Girls Who Code? Anybody want to chime in with that? How do you get started? Does it cost money? How do you... Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Um... So it, it does not cost money. Um, the only uh, cost would be your sort of volunteer hours to be able to run it. Um, you would get started on the Girls Who Code website. Uh, they, they have different um, 
lots of actually information available on their website. They do have sort of an interactive map where you can look up any local clubs that are near you, um, which is one place if you want to go and join a club uh, that might be around. But if you want to start your own, they have a, a form there that you would fill out uh, to do that. So you would give all of the information about where you want to host it, what the um, they have an agreement between the host site and Girls Who Code. Um, and they would want, you know, your name of the person who's going to be running it. Um, and just a, a bunch of information there. Uh, they do a background check since we're working with minors. So that's part of the process. Um, and then once you're in, you have access to a bunch of materials on their website. So everything from, um, you know, different lesson plans for different series of activities and lots of different languages, lots of spotlight people um, and videos to look into just a, a bunch of resources. So even if you're or you yourself are not familiar with the activities or with coding too much, you can still uh, run a club and be able to, to help the students out that way. Um, and so, yeah, everything is pretty much through the, the website and um, each club has its own space that where students would be able to register on the site and, and sort of directly interact on there. And kind of like the club itself, it sort of leaves it open to each club. They have sort of recommended things if you want to, you know, uh, be guided a little bit more in your approach to the club, but you can also take free reign of it. So in my department, I have a couple of undergrad students who help me run the club and I let them design their own lesson plans. And so we, we sort of run with that and, and develop our own. And so even though I had started with the Girls Who Code curriculum when I started the club a few years ago, we've sort of ventured away from that. And now we just make up our own stuff as we go along and, and that still counts. And, and we still get to uh, connect with the larger girls who code community and, and they have an app and everything where all of the girls in the community can sort of connect with each other and, and start chatting. And so it's, it's a good time. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Emily, I have a question for you. I noticed on your t-shirt, it said girls plus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's our effort to be a little more inclusive um, to try to invite uh, people that are on the gender spectrum. So transgender, non-binary, gender fluid. So um, it's a, um, a signal that it is a safe space for all that want to come and learn coding in a collaborative, joyful spot. I love the word joyful and I've been, of thinking about how to rename my club to be more inclusive, but still keep the word girls in there so that it becomes a strong messaging, um, a strong message that girls can and do code and, and are involved with technology. So I, Emily, I think I'm gonna borrow your idea, like tech savvy girls, we've been talking about it for a while, but we haven't found just the right thing, but I'm gonna put it out there to some of the, girls who are involved at me and look into maybe Tech Savvy Girls Plus. That's a great idea. Any other questions that anybody has for anybody else? I thought we'd keep this to half an hour and there's three minutes left. And does anybody have any questions for each other? Doing my wait time thing here. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And maybe we could end with Lisa telling us a little bit about um, if girls want to go to college and are interested in computer science, what should they do to prepare for that? And is that the only pathway? What's the pathway like for careers? Oh, there are so many pathways into computer science and computing, and there are lots of computing adjacent uh, career paths. And so, yeah, there's, there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, I didn't even know computer science was a thing until I was almost halfway through college. So you all are getting a much earlier start than I did, uh, which I love to see. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, in coming to UVM, to our own computer science department, then, um, you know, we have the tours and things that you can come and visit here and see what we do and 
and sort of what we're looking into. Um, each program is a little bit different and specializes in different things. Uh, so some of them will specialize in video game development, whereas others might specialize in robotics and then others might specialize in um, sort of like web development or cybersecurity. And so there's lots of areas of computer science. It's not just coding. Coding is a tool that you can use, but computer science is very broad. Um, and so, you know, you, you don't need to have a, you know, a, a check box or a list of skill sets uh, in order to be successful in computer science. You can have lots of varied interests and lots of varied backgrounds and still be successful in this. So, so yeah, whatever pathway you, you find to it, I hope it involves computing in some way. Thanks. Thanks, that's really helpful. Um, I'm getting ready right now to go to an event tonight at a makerspace that is open. It's called a WTF event and it's open to women, trans and femmes. And I am leading a coding activity or e-textile activity. And here's a project I've been working on and learning how to code my, I'm in Arizona. So I decided to make an Arizona e-textile project. So I coded my hat and when I tip it, just the right way, the lights shut off and change patterns. So I'm gonna end you with that as my project. And thank you so much, everybody for inspiring each other and hopefully inspiring more girls who code in chapters and the like in Vermont. Happy Computer Science Education Week, everyone. Thank you too. Bye now. Thank you.